Good morning and welcome along to another live stream from Dundee United with me, Daniel. It's lovely to have you here this morning and I hope you're looking forward to this one because we have got some big action here and it could all go very wrong very quickly, sorry. So if you're looking forward to it, please do chuck a thumbs up. Come and get involved in the chat as always. We'll of course be talking a lot about the end of the EFL season today. It's the last day of the season. There's lots to play for at the bottom of the championship, at the top and bottom of League One and at the top of League Two as well. So there's lots to look forward to. I hope you're looking forward to it as well. And thank you for being here. It does make a massive difference. I'm sure there'll be a bit of chat about the food trailer yesterday as well. It got a few people interested. But the main thing with Dundee United today is the first game. It's a Scottish Cup fifth round tie. It's our last chance to win a trophy. Realistically, with the old firm clubs in the SPL, we're probably not going to catch them this year. And if we don't do one of those two things, I think that's probably curtains for the save. So we do have to think about that and we do have to hope we can find a solution. But thank you to everyone who was waiting already. It's lovely to have you all here. And I hope you've all had a good week. I hope you're looking forward to the weekend. And Touchwood, all of your clubs will do well. Unless you're playing Luton, that is. But let's go and have a look at what's been happening in a couple of games we were off camera. So you were with me up until the Rangers game where we got a good draw in the end. We then won 3-0 at home to Air United. Mitchell, Lord and Serrano with those. And 3-1 away at Aberdeen. Luca Cannell, Lawrence Shankland and Stevie Mallon scored as we rested the whole team ahead of this cup court of, oh, fifth round, sorry. Is it the last 16? It is. So looking at the ties. Oh, Celtic have gone out. Celtic went out yesterday to Air United. Who else has gone out? Rangers got through. Any other big shocks? Not really. All the rest of the top tier sides are through. But one of the old firm are out, so it could well make a difference. We'll wait and see if that has any impact on how we're going later on. Fingers crossed it will, and apologies, as I accidentally get a, a wrapper there. But thank you all for coming in. Let's go and have a look at what we're going to do for today's game, because there are some big permutations for us. If we lose this game, we can't win a trophy. If we don't then break the old firm, it will be the end. So let's go and get straight into the first one. We'll have a look at the lineup first, because we rested as many as possible. We've rotated, we've changed as much over the last couple of games course we have to have a goalkeeper on the bench that does affect the squad slightly dylan good morning thank you for popping in one of the regulars lovely to have you here thank you to everyone who's new along as well who's been subscribing who's been following on twitch as well it does make a difference uh dylan we won six nil against bolton and i scored one absolutely brilliant well done and enjoy them i know the results are always exciting obviously scoring goals is great but just enjoy the occasions because they're things that you don't they go quicker than you think so make the most of them but well done good to see you doing well and thank you to everyone who's coming along and thank you for all the support if you haven't already come and get involved in the chat come and say hello please chuck a thumbs up on it as we go into what should be of what's remaining the biggest game of the season because we've now got to try and win a trophy and with celtic out that gives us extra motivation can we get through can we avoid Rangers in the next round? Let's go and find out. We've got Dami Ziga in goal. Brooklyn and Ramos, the fullbacks, with Mengi and Jasimovic as centre-half. McCrory and Lord in the middle. Serrano off the right wing. Mokri off the left wing. And Matt O'Reilly into double figures for the season now, behind Scott Mitchell up front. So the only change on the bench is that Sander Clark has to be there. He comes in for Ali McCann. The rest of it is as you would expect. So a very strong side we're facing the Hamilton with. But they're our bogey side. They beat us in the League Cup final last season. John, good morning. Thank you for popping in. And they've caused us all sorts of trouble. So, I'm not hugely confident for this game. They've still got Winter and Martin up front, who are two unbelievable players. And we've got to bear that in mind. We've got to keep our eye on things. A thank you to everyone who's in as well, who watched the trailer for the new Food Channel last night. It did make a massive difference. And it's done really well. So, thank you for the support with it. Um, of course, there will be more to come on that from next month as well. I want to try and do something Euros based to keep the football theme in. And we'll be live on Twitch tomorrow morning as well. We'll be watch, uh, playing with Balamini United. And we'll of course have finished our transfer special and been starting our second season there. So that's going to be a big one. Now, I can't see. I don't think Scott Martin was the one, was it? Finn Malcolm's on the bench. He was one of our youngsters before. Be a kick in the teeth if he came off the bench to score. But I'm not sure Scott Martin was the really good young striker so does that mean one of them's not playing i'm gonna to have to go and have a look in a moment but let's have a look at no he's playing in a holding role 
So what happened to their other big striker? Because Winter was one of two there. Bear with us while we go and have a look at that. And hopefully we'll get an answer. Because if he's missing out, that's not a huge problem for us. If he's moved on out of Scotland, that could be an issue. So no, he's still there. He's their star player. Dean Martin is injured. Okay, so one of their two superstar strikers. They both score at one in two. But one of them's out. So that does make a difference for us. They're playing the narrow diamond. We've seen with Bangor City that can be really useful. And as we go into today's game, I'm not that confident. They've got a Dauphin at right back. Absolute superstar at centre half for us in the head coach earlier this year. That was at Dundee. Of course, Dundee United's rivals. And Harvey at left back's a decent player as well. But so far, we've dominated the match without really having any sort of great chances. As O'Reilly plays a 1 2 with Brooklyn. Back to Kieran Lord on the edge. Into Serrano. There's the goal. Excellent work. One step closer to the quarterfinals and a positive to start the morning. We're happy enough with that. But let's just catch up with the chat quickly. KW, I got FK uh, Zenja, sorry, from Norwegian second division to the Prem title. A few years later, I made it to the Europa League final versus Tottenham. 60,000 capacity of Spurs, and only 22 of my fans bother to show up. <laughs> oh, you've got a feel for it sometimes, haven't you? But the same as when I have my Bangor City games away in like the Europa League or even when we got to the Champions League groups. The Liverpool one was okay. But when we played abroad, I think it was like Inter Milan, maybe. There was only like 200 at most. And you just think, but that's not really going to happen, is it? So I kind of get your frustration there. But unfortunately, the reputation hasn't grown in time, had it? But there you go. It's a great achievement nonetheless. So well done for reaching it. We've reached half time here. It's a 1-0 lead. I will just say a quick thank you again because I've talked quite a lot in recent months about investing in the channel and the support that you guys watching the adverts and helping out on Twitch and things gives me. And you might be able to notice just behind me here, I finally got a proper computer chair. So we can work in comfort and without getting a numb backside. So thank you so much for the support with that. I've just realised you've got Dijon Sterling's attributes instead of the actual game in the background as Winter's coming forward again. But just to say that you can see your support does make a difference and thank you for it as they've scored an absolute screamer for a Gumby, a Gumby sorry, and it's one all on the hour mark. We just can't beat Hamilton Academical, can we? There's something about them. They've got something in the water. But thank you for everyone coming in. Uh, Aaron, will you be watching United reach the final today? Uh, bear with me a moment. And Dylan, I'm now training with that Bolton team as well. Oh, that's fantastic news. Um, it depends what channel it's on, Aaron. Because if it's the Premier game, I won't. If it's the BBC Scotland game, I will. It's as simple as that. So, no, it's the Premier Sports game, so I have no access to it, unfortunately. The other one, tomorrow, St. Mirren v. St. Johnston is on BBC Scotland, so I can watch that one. So that's the one I'll be watching out of the two. As we tend to go, I think we're going to have to make some changes and just go for it. Lord's coming down the right-hand side. He gets towards the byline. He's got a chance to cross into the front post. Send the way as far as Brooklyn. It is the final day of the EFL season as well. For once, my side's got nothing to play for, but there's a lot of permutations about. On the podcast, we've all had our say on who's going to go down out of Derby, Sheffield Wednesday and Rotherham. So we'll see who's right out of that as well. But it should be an interesting day. Yeah, Aaron, that's the problem. Premier Sports just is not affordable. I haven't got Sky Sports either, so I'm reliant on... Largely the BBC games, which is great that they've got half of the cup coverage, but often it's not the tie you... Um, well, they get second pick, don't they? The first pick goes to Premier exclusively. We have had 25 shots in this game and nine on target. Hamilton have scored with their only shot. It's going to be one of those days, isn't it? So Sterling's going to come on. Serrano switches sides. We'll have two wingers and we'll just try and flood the ball into the box. We will then have Lawrence Shankland on up front for Mitchell, who's had a poor game. And then the apprehensive Ross McCrory replaced by Stevie Mallon. You all know I like to do that because he's got the long shot rating. He's got the free kick taking attribute. And he gives us a chance at a goal. So thank you to everyone coming in. It's lovely to have you all here. Please do chuck a thumbs up if you haven't already. Let us know who you're supporting, who you're watching today and what you think will go on. As a Gumby gets the ball downfield. If they nick this, it will be daylight robbery. Winter's got himself in on the right. He's going to do it, isn't he? Good block by Ramos. Excellent work. Jasimovic intercepts the second time. And we've got a chance now. One and a half minutes to go. There has not been a game this season. We've much more deserved a win from. We just can't score a goal. 
We're into double figures for shots on target. We've got to be breaching 30 in terms of over the match now. And we're still somehow one all. As Mengi heads to Brookin at right back. To Lord. To Sterling. Brookin's overlapping if he wants him. There he is. Brookin gets to the byline. Delivers towards O'Reilly. Can't add to his tally. Loses out in the air. Ramos again on the left to Serrano. Back to Ramos again. To Mallon. Just cut inside and take a big long shot. I'm sure it'll go in. As Lord switches right to Brookin. There's four in the box this time. That can make a difference. Goes back to Mallon. To O'Reilly. Somebody shoot. Ramos does. Just over the bar. Oh, it's frustrating. Ten shots on target. 27 in the match. How on earth have we drawn that game? And the problem is, we've now got to travel to Hamilton. It adds to an already congested fixture schedule. Easy for me to say. And we're in big trouble there. Uh, Matt's had a few years back from FM and it's beautiful to be back. Your videos are great and it's nice to be back with FM. Oh, thank you for the kind words. I'm glad that you're enjoying them. And I'm glad you got back into FM. It's always enjoyable. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm glad you're happy with it. And thank you for the kind words. They are greatly appreciated. Uh, Aaron, Hamilton is my bogey team on FM for United as well. I just don't know what it is. We thought we'd solve the problem when Seagrass left because he cost us the League Cup final. The problem I have is that we beat them in the easy games. In the league games, we're comfortable when they don't mean anything. As soon as we play them in a big match, they just have a way of nicking results. So now if we look at the schedule, we've got Hamilton again in midweek in the league. We've then got the weekend game against Kilmarnock. And then we've got a mid the week after, sorry, we've got the fifth round replay. And I wonder if we'll have lost a few of the under-21s for the international break then as well. So I'm not quite sure what we do about it. I think we rest the players for the Hamilton League game. Or maybe the Kilmarnock one, because they're bottom of the league. We should win it, in theory. We've taken that risk and failed before, so I don't know if it's the right move. The Cup Quarter Final draw. Let's see who we got. Inverness, if we get through, who are in the second tier now. Their best player is Mackenzie McIntosh. He looks pretty good. Let's go and scout him, shall we? But a wonderful display, nonetheless. We played really well. That's the problem. We very rarely have a poor performance. It's just getting the the result that the performance merits. We have strikers who score 10 in 10 and then none in 10. And there's no sort of balance to them. It's really frustrating. I'm paying homage to Scotland with the Iron Brew this morning as well. It's the drink that kept the podcast going. But of course, we've never done it face to face for about a year and two months now. So it has to live on in spirit for our homes. Yes, Dylan's brought back Who Am I. It doesn't often come onto the YouTube saves, but Dylan has brought back Who Am I. It's a special on the Twitch stream, so you'll be able to see more tomorrow morning, I'm sure. But this is going to be a cracker. So, Who Am I? I've played with Robbie Keane, Jimmy Bullard, Andre Gray, Leon Best, and Rob Green. So we've got to try and work out some clubs there, haven't we? Bullard and Keane could both be Spurs. Andre Gray, Brentford, Burnley or Luton or Watford. Leon Best, did he play for any of those at the same time? I don't think so. And Rob Green, that could be a number of clubs, couldn't it? I don't know who we'll go for on Rob Green. I mean, West Ham's the most likely, isn't it, in terms of timing? But that's a great question. So if we're assuming that the first two are Spurs, that'll be the mid-2000s. And then we're thinking of someone who's moved on to Brentford or Burnley or Luton. Get involved in the chat if you think you know the answer to Dylan's. We'll try and get there before the clues this time. None of my repeat of the Pascal Chimbonda scenario where I got it in seconds. That's a one-off. I had to make it a clip on the Twitch. I was that impressed with myself. I'm trying to work out the timings on that, Dylan. Because the first two have got to be Spurs. Rob Green, I'm assuming, is going to be West Ham if we're working in chronological order. Could Leon Best then be Newcastle, maybe? <clears throat> but who was at Spurs at that time that then would have gone on and played for Brentford or Burnley or Watford? It's a very good question because the era makes it more difficult. See, I thought for a moment that possibly... 
Like I was looking at the first three and thinking, oh, maybe it's like a Ben Foster or something like that, but that's not going to happen. Who else was about a Tottenham at that time? Oh, it's very difficult. Come and get involved if you think you know. Dylan's still in the show with the Who Am I again. The Twitch special makes it over to YouTube for one day only. I'll tell you what, Dylan. Instead of giving us the answer today, if we don't get it, roll it over to Twitch tomorrow and let's give the others a go. Because I know the audience is sort of split between the two. So we'll try and work it out. And if not, we'll put it back in tomorrow and see what happens. Because I'm a little bit stumped by that one. It's going to be an absolute cracker to try and work out as well. Luca cannell has been taken ill, unfortunately. He's going to miss the midweek game. So I think that sort of dictates. We'll play the first team against Hamilton in midweek if they're fit. And then we'll go to reserves at the weekend against Kilmarnock instead. I think that's the way forward. If you are enjoying this one, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. It does make a difference and help people find us. And come and get involved in the chat, of course. Dylan's back with Who Am I? And there's plenty more to look forward to as well. So, is Leon best? I'm just, I can't get the Newcastle stint out of my head. But I'm imagining he's been at about 100 clubs, hasn't he? And he was at Blackburn for a season. He did really well, didn't he? But I don't actually know where he is now. Has he retired? He's got, he can only be about 33, 34. But just thinking of his career, the only clubs I can think in that sort of era were Coventry, Newcastle, Blackburn. But he had loans at basically everyone, so I don't really want to get carried away with it. Or it could have been for the Republic of Ireland. Oh! Clue 1, Dylan. I began my career in 2001. So in 2001, he began his career. I'm going to go for an Irishman then. Because then Bullard could be Wigan and the other two could be for Ireland. But I still think, even if it's the island one, I still think it will be Tottenham Hotspur. So we're looking at people that then would have been at Brentford or Burnley or Watford. I'm going to go Brentford or Burnley for Andre Gray because it's got to be a bit earlier. See, the only man, see, I was thinking like a Dean Kiley or someone going back then, but he would have begun his career well after that. Uh, well before that, sorry. Who on earth could that possibly be? Come and get involved if you think you've got a clue. But this is an absolute humdinger from Dylan. And I've got a feeling this one's going to end up carrying over to tomorrow morning because it's that good. Let's go and get into our second game of the day very quickly and then we'll come back to that. We're probably going to go as strong as possible today. Let this team recover. Those with a heavy match load can drop out. That is Mengi, McCrory and Mockery. So we'll bring in Kerr, I think. So let's put Jasimovic to the right. Kerr in left centre half. Mokri will swap sides with Serrano. So Sterling can then come in as a winger. Both of those better in those roles anyway. They might be our best two at this point. And then McCrory can be replaced by Stevie Mallon with Lord dropping as the deep line playmaker on defence. And then on the bench we can have Ali McCann back in for Xander Clark. And I think perhaps aside from a fullback, I'll leave the rest the same. So I'll drop out Chris Mockery for De Haney. And we'll leave the rest of the squad as is. So Hamilton v Dundee United. Now this game means nothing. So we'll probably go and win it 4 or 5 nil now. But whether that's the case or not, we'll wait and see. It's lovely to have you all here this morning as well. Thank you for joining along. It is much appreciated. We'll be live on Twitch tomorrow morning as well. With Ballymena United and transfer news too. As we get the ball over to the right with Dujon Sterling. Almost paused it by accident there. Let's get down a line to Brooking. Chance to get a cross in early. Imagine if we score in the first minute. After all that struggle in the cup tie. Lord gets the ball into the back post. Ridiculous. Serrano scores. And when it doesn't matter, we're suddenly back on fire. Not enough big game players there, I don't think. Uh, Dylan, I'll tell you what. I'm absolutely stumped. Because I've got to my head that it's got to be someone who's Irish. They've got to have then played for Wigan or Spurs. Or could it be Hull City? It could be that Hull City side, couldn't it? Oh! I'm trying to work out if they could have played with all of them. Because I'm looking at Ireland. I'm looking at Robbie Keane, Jimmy Bullard. 
Leon Best, I can cover those all with a name I'm thinking. I'm not sure I can for Andre Gray, and certainly not for Rob Green, though. The first name that came to my head was Paul McShane. You never won a senior cap for your country. Oh, you've ruined it straight away. As Serrano scores a second. Never won a cap for the country. That probably rules it out being Ireland, then. Or rules it out being a Ireland in terms of what I'm thinking, because Robbie Keane would be a... Would have been a senior international bio one. He was playing alongside Niall Quinn by then. So that then means that we're looking at Tottenham again, doesn't it? But someone who's not been an international. So then probably not Irish and moved over to other clubs. It's an absolute humdinger. Well done, Dylan. If anyone else has got a clue, come and let us know. If not, we'll roll it over to Twitch tomorrow because we are really struggling to get this one. If you haven't yet, please do chuck a thumbs up on it as Henry Agumbi is at it again. We've just got to hope that they play their first team at the weekend, so they're all knackered by next midweek. I'm trying to put some names together here. Unless Andre Gray can't be at Luton with that chronological order, can it? Ah, I tell you what. I'm going for a new method now. Robbie Keane could be Coventry. Starting a career in 2001. Or Leeds, couldn't it? He would have been at Leeds then. So Leeds 2001. Let's go by that method. Then Rob Green could be Norwich in the mid-2000s. We've got no options now. So let's go. If it's starting my career in 2001, Robbie Keane is going to be Leeds. He's going to be the first cog in the wheel there. But afterwards, we're in trouble. John Herry's Bobby Zamora. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm trying to work it out. Would he have played with Andre Gray? And if so, where? But the rest of them, you're spot on, definitely. Andre Gray's the only one I'm not sure about. This player is not from Ireland and still plays football today as we're 2-1 up at half time. Thank you to everyone coming in. It's lovely to have so many of you here. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already. It helps people find us. And come and give us some help with Dylan's Who Am I? I've played with Robbie Keane, Jimmy Bullard, Andre Gray, Leon Best and Rob Green. I began my career in 2001 and I've never won a senior cap for my country. The player's not Irish and still plays football today. That is absolutely brilliant. Now we've got to work this out. So 2001 and still playing today. That's got to be a player who's getting on for late 30s or 40 is probably playing in the lower leagues now, rather than right at the top of the game, unless it's a goalkeeper who's a backup somewhere. But I don't think it will be, given the Rob Green bit. But we've got to go for Leeds at the start. So who started at Leeds in 2001 who's still playing now? That's the next question for me, because I'm convinced that the Robbie Keane link has got to be Leeds, if it's not Ireland. Yeah, John, that's it. The Andre Gray ones, they're not sure. As Hamilton are in again, I tell you what, it's not just the league we bottle it in. We've bottled it here as well. It's 2-2. Two -two. Hamilton have equalised. suppose I better keep an eye on the FM at some point, shouldn't I? But unfortunately, we've dropped the ball again. We just cannot beat this Hamilton team. Let's go and make some changes. Mitchell's been awful again. So Shankland on for him. Ramos not playing well at left back, looking tired. Kerr's had a poor game. Brooking's nervous at right back. So let's get Dehaney on for him. And Sterling's been average. So Mikey Johnston on as well. And we'll swap them both to inverted wingers. We'll try another different tact. Inverted winger for Serrano. The same for Mikey Johnston. And just try and nick it. But I think third place is pretty much wrapped up now. Second is almost gone. And we're going to be reliant on winning the cup to keep this save alive. Um, right, let's get back to this, Dylan. Robbie Keane, just tell me, is it Leeds? I've got to be right, haven't I? I'm trying to think. Who was there at the time who was young, who was just coming through? Because the only person I can think of from then is... Oh! Oh, no. I was getting too excited. The players I'm thinking of from then who were young. We've got Aaron Lennon. We've got James Milner. I know it won't be like a Ferdinand or a... Alan Smith or anyone like that. But there's got to be more than Lennon or Milner. But I can't think of who else. The players never played for Leeds. Oh, Dylan, come on. 
Can't do that to me. So Robbie Keane then has to be Spurs. Back to the original. Jimmy Bullard was at Spurs also. So that can count both of those together. Andre Gray, if that's near chronological order, has to be Brentford or Burnley. And the player's still playing now, but started his career before that. So then it could have been Rob Green at Norwich in 0405, couldn't it? This is excruciating. I don't know how you come up with these, mate, honestly. Fair play to anyone who can get this down in the comments. Come and get involved if you haven't already. Thank you to everyone joining along. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't. And of course, if you didn't see the, the Food Channel trailer yesterday, please do go and give it a try. It was a very in exciting moment for me. I've got, a, I've got a channel here for FM. We've got one where we cover football in the podcast. And now I've got one covering food. So all of my hobbies are linked there. Charlie Betts, Michael Mackindo. That's a great shout, to be fair. But I don't think he played with Gray, did he? Because it would have been too early. Klug 5, the clubs you have just mentioned in chronological order are correct. Oh, blimey. So now we're thinking Tottenham mid-2000s, who's young enough to still be playing now. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, and I know for my quality, it's not there. But there's some crackers in that name. Oh. I mean, these are both brilliant and incredibly frustrating. And for a man of football knowledge, it annoys me when I don't get them. Because we've got the ball on the edge of the box. I'm just keeping an eye to see if we can score a winner at some point here as well. We're in on the right side of the box. I'm presuming it's still 2-2. It is. We're in the third minute of stoppage time. The ball's coming in. Lord delivers it. Johnston down for Ramos. Oh, there you go. A moment of relief. As Francisco Ramos scores a rocket from 25 yards. The final kick of the game. That is stupendous. 3-2 to Dundee United. The hunt for second is back on. Let's not get downhearted just yet. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And now we've got to make sure we don't suffer when we play the reserves against Kilmarnock at the weekend. It's a game we should win on paper. But it could yet go very wrong. So, let's go and pray Serrano, because he got two goals. He did really well. And Kilmarnock's the next stop here. I'm really running out of options here, Dylan, but I don't want you to tell me, because I feel like this is one I should be able to get. The problem with that Tottenham side is under Martin Yole, which I'm presuming is the era it was, is there were so, so many youngsters he gave games to. And there'll be loads that just made one, two, three, four appearances. And it's going to be really infuriating. But I'm determined to get it. Because there were so many players there. Clue six is the last clue. Okay, wait a minute. Because I'm sure we can do it. I'm trying to think of English players that were in that side. So. Oh. There were loads, weren't there? I'll tell you what. I went on loan to four different clubs during my five years at Tottenham. That doesn't rule out any of the youngsters. Let me just brainstorm the ones I'm remembering. So, the ones I've got in my head are... It's obviously not like Defoe or Huddleston or Dawson or any of the ones that were in the first team there. Could it be like a Johnny Jackson? Who else was there? It won't be Callum Davenport. Who was the other young centre-half? Was it Gardner? Gardner was one of the others. It won't be Wayne Routledge, given the players that are there. I'm just looking at your list of players again. There's two more that I'm trying to work out. I've got two more names. I'm just seeing if they could have played with everyone. So bear with us a minute. The two names I've got, and you can just tell me if they're right. I'm trying to work them out. Are... Oh, this player's not English. <laughs> Those two names are irrelevant then. I was going to say Sean Davis or Michael Brown, but that's completely irrelevant too. Who on earth can it be if it's not someone who's English? I'm trying to think of that side because it was predominantly English. That's really difficult. Fair play to you here. 
It's not English and it's not Irish. The only players I can think in that team are... Oh, oh, let me have a look. Hang on. No, can't be that player either. Oh, you have absolutely done us here, Dylan. Absolutely done us. But we're going to get it. Simon Davis, Charlie Betts says. Definitely worth a go. He is English. All oh, right, fair enough. Uh, so, then the other two I had were Sean Davis, Michael Brown. But I don't think it's either of them. Maybe I'm too early in Tottenham era. Because they've got to have been... You said they started in 2001. They've got to have been a few years into their career. That's the problem, isn't it? I've got another offer from China for Matt O'Reilly. I am so determined to get this if nobody else has in the comments. I refuse to let you tell me the answer, even if I have to work it out till tomorrow morning, Dylan. Jamie O'Hara. I don't know that he would have played with Andre Gray, would he? Or Rob Green, for that matter. It's not a bad shout, though. You're doing better than me. Someone who's English. Oh, jeez. Oh, I tell you what. Dylan, you might not know this, depending on uh, era or whatever. I'm just trying to work it out. Is it possibly someone who is in my Balamina team in the live stream save? I might be well off the mark here, but it's a name I've got in my head. And I'm thinking it might be, but I don't know when his career started. That's my problem. I'm going to go for it. I think it is. Is it Dean Marnie? Because he played for Brentford when Andre Gray was there, definitely. He played for Tottenham when Bullard and Robbie Keane were there. Rob Green, I'm not sure about. He could have played at one of Leon Best's numerous clubs. I'm trying to work out Rob Green, though. So I don't think it is. That's the only name I can offer at the moment. Is Dean Marnie. But there's no way he will have played with Rob Green, is there? Oh, there's got to be a simple answer to this. I just can't work it out. Because he would have started his career a few years earlier, I'd have thought. But there's probably not many others where that will be the case. No. Oh, Dylan, come on. Thank you to everyone coming in. Please do chuck a thumbs up if you haven't already. It does make a difference. I promise we'll play a little bit of FM eventually. But we're currently being stumped by Dylan to a mic. We're six clues in. I thought I'd got close, but not quite. It is. Oh, it's Dean Marnie. Go on. Absolutely brilliant. It only took what? When was your first one? 20 minutes to get it. <laughs> John Tom Huddleston. It's a good shout because he would have played with Bullard at um, Hull City, wouldn't he? But I don't think, again, it's the Rob Green link. But Dean Marnie. What a hero. Someone who was in my Balamina team in the live stream series. And I still took 20 minutes to get him. I should be ashamed of myself. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful stuff. I think that's the best one you've ever done, Dylan. I'll stick my neck on the line there. I have got two written ready for a live stream that you can't make in the future. Just to make sure that the, the series lives on in your spirit. Wonderful stuff though. Thank you to everyone who took part. It's lovely to have you all here. Come and get involved in the chat if you haven't already. This is the sort of football nerdery and fun that we have most days. And Dylan certainly deserves the reward for providing some of that entertainment there. Right, let's get this lineup picked for today. We're going to have Xander Clark, full reserve team against Kilmarnock. Left back's Reese Devine. Right back is De Haney. Centre halves will be Kerr and Finley. Into midfield, we've got Ali McCann, Stevie Mallon, Jordan Holsgrove. That's the triangle. Johnston off the left wing. I think now we can go back to Sterling on the right. And up front, we've got Lawrence Shankland, who's got a chance to work his way in the team the way Mitchell's playing. On the bench, we're going to chuck some of the youngsters. So Milligan, Watson, uh, Nielsen and Dunn will be in there. 
Who else doesn't normally start for us? Donaldson's not quite fit, but we'll give him a go anyway. We just need someone in the centre of the park. That's where the canal injury is a problem. But they've all got a heavy match load. I think we have to go for McCrory and probably for Mockery, who didn't play in a week. So that's the lineup. That's the squad. It's a gamble. But if we beat Kilmarnock and we prepare and we get through in the cup replay as well, this then becomes a very good morning. Uh, Marnie and Mido definitely the hardest. And probably would have played together at Tottenham, wouldn't they? D. Marnie played with Rob Green alone. Spell at Norwich in 05. Oh, fair enough. See, I was trying to think later. I was trying to think, was he there at West Ham with him? Was he at any of the other sides for a point? Charlie would never ever have got that great question. Absolutely. We, we should all get the sack and just let Dylan host our podcast because that's more entertaining than anything we do. <laughs> he steals the show. Brilliant work, Dylan. Well done as always. Well done for everyone getting involved. Some brilliant guesses in there that I wouldn't have got near. And now we've got to get a win against Kilmarnock with a very rotated side. Thank you so much to everyone who's watching along this morning. It's lovely to have you all here. Please do chuck a thumbs up. Come and get involved if you haven't already. We'll be live on Twitch tomorrow morning as well. That'll be half 10 with Balamina, a transfer special there. But what a week it's been. We lead already with Lawrence Shankland. He's, he's staking a claim. He's staking a claim for a place in that 11 in midweek. And with the way Mitchell's playing, it could just be a kick up the backside for him. A quick note as well to say, a very quick plug. There's an international theme series starting tomorrow lunchtime as well. I'm a little bit annoyed by it because I recorded it. And then uh, one of the creators made a database that would have been perfect for it. And I think he started live streaming it as well. As Brophy puts it in for Kilmarnock, a man we tried to sign many years ago. And we're now level at one all. Not the best day at the office so far. And it doesn't look like it's working out for us. I've just sunk the chair a little bit so I don't start wobbling the camera too much. As Sterling's got it on the right hand side. Switches the play to the left back. We're coming forward still. Can we create the goal? It's in towards Shankland. Bobbles down to him. Almost a poacher's finish. And Sterling can't quite get to the rebound in time. Let's change Johnston to an inverted winger. Just try and get him inside into the box. As Mallon crosses to Finley. Oh, he's hit the post. Another one goes begging. Johnston back to Mallon. Loves a shot from here. Passed it back all the way to halfway. Out to Kerr on the right, who's still up. To McCann. It's eventually cleared away. Celtic running riot against Hamilton. That would suggest they're playing their reserves in preparation for the cup game. Whether I'm right or not, I don't know. As Kilmarnock put a great chance wide. They should have scored. I thought it might have been off. Wasn't. Should have scored the goal. Charlie, quick one for you as you're uh, part of the podcast. Homage with the Iron Brew today. And I've got plenty of a chocolate selection as well. So plenty to look forward to there. At half time though, we are being frustrated. And we're not really dominating this game either. Uh, without the big hitters on the bench. I worry it could be drop points again. And we're going to have to throw absolutely everything at the cup. Because if we don't win this, it's a disaster of season. And it's probably the end of the save. As we're 25 to go, there's no sign of it. I've got to do something. So, Ali McCann will be replaced by Ross McCrory. Chris Mockery will come on for Jordan Holsgrove. He hasn't played in that number 10 position for a long time. And then at right back, I'm going to place the Haney who's nervous with Lewis Nielsen. We're just going to go for it. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's not do that. Let's put Sterling at right back as a wing back. And let's bring Watson on on the right wing. Try and go even more aggressive. 25 minutes to go. We've got to get a winner here. We're going to demand more from the lads. We're going to try and kick them up the backside. And please just let us nick a 2-1 win. Even if it's the same style as last time. Thank you to everyone who's watching along as well. It's lovely to have you here this morning as always. Do come and get involved in the chat if you're supporting an EFL team for the final day of the season. And let us know what you think is going to happen. A wonderful who am I from Dylan. That's suitably stolen the morning. And Kilmarnock have stolen our chance at second place. A really poor display. A really poor result and performance. It's one all here. And that's not what we were looking for at all. Oh, we now have to win the cup game. We have to win it. If not. This save is on its last legs. Because I don't see how we get second. Celtic are winning. They're heavily improved from last year. Rangers have got loads of games in hand. 
And if we don't win the Scottish Cup, I think that's curtains. We just cannot break that old firm consistently. And that's a problem you continually end up having here. I hope those of you saw the food channel yesterday and trailer yesterday enjoyed it, sorry. It was something I really look forward to. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. And thank you for the incredible support, because we're closing in on two and a half thousand subscribers now. Something I never thought was possible when this game came out. As Dylan's back in again, the Who Am I is back for a second. So come and get involved in this one. Let us know what you think. Chuck a thumbs up on the video and let us know who you think this is. Who am I? I play with Gary Roberts, Justin Cochran, great name there. Lee Camp, Chris Martin, Teddy Sheringham and Freddie Yumberg. So, there's a lot to unpack here. I'm going to say you're throwing us and that Freddie Yumberg's West Ham. Don't know why, I automatically think that. Teddy Sheringham could be a number of clubs. Chris Martin, based on the era, are we thinking Norwich or Luton? Lee Camp. Oh, he's been at loads of clubs. Derby, mid-2000s, wasn't it? Justin Cochran. Now, he came through at Crew, didn't he? Because I remember him being good on an old FM. Isn't he a coach now as well? I'm sure he is. But I don't remember who else he played for aside from Crew. But I'm going to stick with that. Mid-2000s. Did he come for a QPR, maybe? I'm sure it, maybe he was one of the London lads. And Gary Roberts. I mean, that doesn't narrow it down. You could put Gary Roberts in basically any who am I, couldn't you? I mean, Wigan and Pompey obviously recently are notable. Ipswich, he had a stint at Accrington. He was at for a long time. And he started in Wales, didn't he? So, <laughs> who knows? I mean, I guess his longest stint was Huddersfield, wasn't it? We've got a number of clubs there to unpack. So I'm going for someone who played lower leagues mid-2000s and then worked up towards the end of it. But there's so many names there with so many different clubs. It's just where do you start, isn't it? Rangers have won one of their games in hand, so it's all about the cup now. We are not going to get anything out of the league. We've got eight days and then we've got our first team against Hamilton. So... I don't know I don't know what chronological order to go in really, that's the problem. Come and let us know if you've got any clues down in the comments. Because this is a very difficult who am I. And I'm not quite sure that this is one I can get. I'm I'm just convincing myself that Jumberg has to be West Ham. Sheringham could be anyone. It just depends on the era, doesn't it? I guess looking at that player and the ones you've picked, they've got to be two thousand onwards. So based on that, it's not going to be Sheringham at United. It could be the second stint of Spurs. But wasn't he at West Ham as well? Would his West Ham stint have clashed with Jumberg? I don't think it would. Because Jumberg was there later, I'm sure. And that's the problem with these. Is you just... You end up going in circles, don't you? I'm trying to work out, did Jumberg overlap with Sheringham? I'm sure it was a season later or earlier. Clue one. I won one cap for my country. Hmm. This is going to be difficult. Do you know, actually, I tell you what. Hang on a minute. I don't know if it's right. I'm throwing it in there based on the West Ham timing. And the fact that he played in the lower leagues. Not knowing who it was. Is there any chance it can be Marlon Harewood? Because he would have played for West Ham at that time. He definitely played lower league football. He played for Ipswich. So would he have clashed there? And he played in lower leagues a lot afterwards. So I'm just wondering if there's any chance that he overlaps. Though I don't think there is. And did he get a cap for England? I'm not sure he did in the end, did he? Him and Zamora are the two that spring to mind. Because they've just played for everyone, haven't they? Who else was in that West Ham team? I'm convinced that's what it is. And if you come out with this player's never played for West Ham, then I'm going to be very frustrated with you. <laughs> it's not Marlon Harewood. Fair enough. I didn't think it was because I'm sure he didn't win an England cap in the end, did he? But it, it's got to be around that era. So, it can't be Bobby Zamora because we've talked about him before. I'm just trying to get the Chris Martin links, the one that's throwing me, ironically. 
timing wise there I can't quite work it out it's a very good one yet again let's just say that by the way but I'm a little bit short on aims here I, I was trying to think again I was looking at Nigel Coca, but he would have not clashed with Chris Martin but did he get I'm sure he got a cap for England didn't he but I don't think it can be him. Um, oh, this is a tough one. Come and get involved if you think you know the answer. Chuck a thumbs up on it and respond to Dylan. Give him an answer because I'm not sure that I've got the answer to this one. It's a very good question. The one cap for your country. Who is it going to be? Oh, Dylan, I tell you what. I think I might have it. I think I've got it, Dylan. Justin Cochran, let me see if I'm right as I go along. Justin Cochran is crew. Lee Camp. Could be any of the clubs, actually. I'm not sure which one that is. That's struggling me. Chris Martin will be Norwich. Teddy Sheringham, Freddie Yumbo, West Ham. Is it Dean Ashton? I think it might be Dean Ashton. It's only Lee Camp that I'm not really sure on. But I'm sure he must have played for one of those clubs at some point, mustn't he? Let's go and look Lee Camp up. Who's he played for? Before Dylan gives me the answer. Did he play for any of those three or I'm going to have a broken heart? I had a, he had a loan spell at Norwich. It's got to be him. It's got to be Dean Ashton. Let's go and get through to this last game because it's going to be the big one to end the morning. If we go out, we'll probably only have one more episode of this save if we go out. Let's try and get through to the weekend. It doesn't seem to be happening, does it? Dylan, put me out of my misery. Please, let me know who it was. It's got to be the man, hasn't it? I'm sure he only played for three clubs because then he retired really early, didn't he? We'll keep an eye on what's happening in the Champions League and Europe because that's going to be an interesting finish to the season. And obviously it doesn't affect us now because we're falling away. But fingers crossed we'll be able to find an outcome. But we have to win this match or we're in trouble. Dean Ashton's correct. That one not quite as painful. Not quite as long. He's always a forgotten man because he retired so early. Yeah, clue three was I retired at 26. What a player he was. It's such a shame. If that kid could have stayed fit, he would have had a lot more than one England cap. He's a wonderful, naturally technically gifted player. He probably, he reminded me a bit of a Sheringham to be honest. But I guess that's what he was bought to do, wasn't it? Is replace him. But, yeah, such a shame. Thank you to everyone coming to the video. Come get involved in the chat if you haven't already. It does make a massive difference. And thank you to Dylan again for the match day entertainment. We'll have one more game to finish on. And it will be the cup quarter final or the cup fifth round replay, sorry. And it's going to determine whether we've got success to come in this series yet still or not. It's the last game before the international break as well, so it's going to be an interesting one. But we should have everyone nice and rested. I wonder when the quarter-final is, actually. I'm not sure when it would normally be played. Ray Milligan's training really well. We've got to think about getting him in the team. Because he's starting to become a good player. He's catching the other two. And maybe he'll score a goal or two, which the others haven't. You can see he's starting to look good. Let's have a quick look at when the quarter-final is scheduled for. I keep going around ahead for some reason. Quarter-final is... Oh, it's the end of February. I don't know why I'm saying international break. So if we get through this fifth round, if the next game's the quarter-final, we'll play that as well. So you can ignore everything I said. Let's try and get through Hamilton. It's either going to be heartbreak or jubilation. And I bet they've got Martin back from fitness now as well. And that's going to be an even bigger blow for us. Because we struggled just with one of them. With both, we could be in big trouble. Let's see how we get on regardless. Hamilton Academical away. We blew it in the first leg despite utter domination. Or in the first tie, I should say. And now we're going to put ourselves through the mill. A tough trip away from home. And it's going to be a lot more difficult. We're going to get the first team out. They won 3-2 in the league game in between. What's going to happen today? Motherwell v Rangers. That's the other game in hand. Rangers have won that. 
we're never getting the top two. It's almost out of reach now already. So let's go and make the changes. 10 recommended by the assistant. We'll do the opposition instructions. And let's see what they've gone for. He's not picking Ross McCrory for some reason. In fact, we could go for that team he's gone for. We'll just see how it works out because McCrory's not happy at the club. We'll give it a go for one game. I'll chuck Shankland up front for Mitchell as well. Just give him a chance because Mitchell's been awful recently. Xander Clark's got to be on the bench for the cup tie. Defensively, I'll get Jason Kerr on there. We've got McCrory, which is fine. Then in midfield, I want Stevie Mallon instead of Luca Canell, I think. And Ali McCann replaced by... Or sorry, Watson replaced by Mikey Johnston. That's the squad for today. Back to close to full strength. I'm dropping O'Reilly back and putting Mockery in as the 10. In fact, I could switch them around again, I think. We'll go and have a look in a second. So it could be the final game of the morning if we go out. It could be very close to the end of this Dundee United save if we blow it. So let's put O'Reilly back in the number 10 and Mockery in the deep line playmaker role. We'll just see how it pans out as we head away to Hamilton. And we have to get through. Our season rides on this game. And Hamilton, they've switched tactic. They've gone for a back three, which we often struggle with. They've got two good strikers on as well. This is going to be a long day at the office as Yates picks it up to Martin. To Yates again. Through ball, Lord intercepts and clears downfield. We're not really going anywhere with it. They're on the attack early doors. Winter flicks on. Yasimovic wins it. Serrano on the left wing. Try to bring him down. Can we get forward though? Let's just get an early goal. Let's get on the front foot here. Serrano goes across the pitch. He's got Sterling over on the right. Instead, he's going alone here. Got all the way to the byline. It's a brilliant run. Can he score here? Back to Sterling. Puts it wide at the post. All that hard work undone. Stunning run from Serrano. But it leads to nothing. And now they've gone 4-3-3. They've got Martin and Winter up there. It's a very strange layout and a wonderful side. And Dylan's back with another Who Am I? So come and get involved with that one. Thank you to everyone who's in this morning. It's lovely to have you all here. As O'Reilly takes the corner, Shanklin loses out. Falls for Jasimovic. We'll get to it in a second, Dylan. Let's just see the rest of this highlight. Can we get the goal? Mengi to O'Reilly. Towards the back post. Hughes heads away. It's going nowhere though, is it? Uh, Jamie, doing a save where I just try winning trophies. Won a treble with Sporting in my second season. Then took the South, uh, Southampton job. Did I make a mistake? Probably, because Southampton's going to be hard to win things. As Shanklin gets in, no one scored until Sterling does the fourth time. I would rather, I guess if you're trying to win trophies, I would say go to a smaller reputation league, but a bigger club would be my advice. Uh, Dylan's got the easiest who am I of the day to finish. Let's see if you're right with that or not. So, who am I? I've played with John Stones, Jonathan Waters, Callum Robinson, Bruno Andrade and Josh Brownhill. Excellent work. So, Stones can only be Barnsley, Everton, City, England. Walters, I'm trying to think. I tell you what, that's not as easy as it looks on paper. As Lord's got a free kick here. Can he make it too? Oh, he can. It's a lovely finish. We're making light work of this so far. If only we could have done it the first time around. Then we wouldn't have had to rest everyone against Kilmarnock. So... Who's got any ideas for the Who Am I? Please do chuck a thumbs up if you haven't. Thank you for the support as always. It's a big one, this. So Jonathan Waters has got to be Stoke. Callum Roberts Robinson. That's the one I don't really get because he's been at a few clubs and didn't really break through till a bit later on. But what club's it going to be out of them? Because he didn't start till, what, mid-2010s? So we've got to be a younger player, haven't we? I'm just trying to look if any of them overlapped club-wise. But I don't think they did really, did they? Josh Brownhill's Bristol City. I guess Callum Robinson did have a spell there, didn't he? So they could both be Bristol City. Bruno Andrade. That's a difficult one. So who's been at... Who's played with John Stones and then also been at Bristol City... And then the Jonathan Waters bit will leave for a second. Bruno Andrade is the other one, isn't it? That's where the difficulty comes because I don't think he's played for either of those clubs. 
So I'm trying to think, where would Andrade be? Early 2010s, he was QPR. After that, he would have been lower leagues, wouldn't he? So let's stick with QPR for that thought. But then Jonathan Waters makes it hard. As we're doing our best to throw it away. Hamilton score one before the break. Let's get through the half-time team talk quickly. Again, utter domination, but only a slender lead to go with it. So I'm trying to work out here. QPR, Bristol City. I know QPR might be wrong, but QPR, Bristol City. Clue two. I've never played. I've played in every football league. Sorry. So every league of the football league. Well, that sort of makes sense. Bruno Andrade might be lower league then. And that means Walters. It's got to be Stoke. Unless it was Ipswich right at the start of his career, maybe. Because Walters, I know he played for a bit before, but that's where he started playing properly. Another brilliant one, Dylan. So let's have a look. We've gone 3-1 up. We've got 40 minutes left. The 4-3-3 actually seems to be suiting us at the minute because the, the fullbacks are just going and getting the freedom of the pitch. We will think about changes shortly. And in fact, the first one will be made in a moment after this highlight as O'Reilly comes over halfway. He's challenged, but it falls for Serrano on the left wing. Beats one man. Beats a second. Can he get the crossing? Can we make it four? O'Reilly does just that. Stevie Mallon on for Mockery. I'm going to rest Serrano because he's so important to us. I'm going to bring Mikey Johnston on as an inverted winger. And even though Shanklin hasn't scored, he's been the better player today. Which does suggest he might get a run in the team. So, Bristol City has got to be right. Waters and Stones is what gets me. As they've scored again here, Hamilton. We can't make it easy, can we? We cannot make it easy. Have I missed anything obvious for John Stones? I don't think I have, have I? I'm sure they're the only clubs he's played for. He's not had any weird loans or anything, has he? Because he just broke straight through into the respective teams. And I doubt the player's going to be an England international. Because with eight minutes left, Sterling shattered. Let's replace him with... In fact, I don't think I've got anyone that can play out on the right. So we might have to leave him for now. And instead, we'll replace Matt O'Reilly with Jordan Holsgrove for the last few minutes. As Hamilton are coming forward again, if they get a third here, this could be a grandstand finish. How we've ended up getting close to conceding three, I don't know. And it's not close anymore. It's a brilliant tackle from Ramos. Winter gets the ball in, brooking away to Mallon. And he hoofs it out. We survive it, but only just. I'm trying to work out, Dylan. I am really struggling with this. Clue three, I've never played for Stoke or Ipswich. Right, so it's a Jonathan Walters different one. So could it be a Burnley and then a player that's been there for a few years and stayed while Brownhill's there now? So it could still be an active Burnley player instead of Bristol City, I guess. Oh. I tell you what, is it... I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. Now, is it Ben Me? I don't know if he ever played for with a couple of them but he would have played with stones wouldn't he and he would have played with brown hill now he would have played with jonathan walters i don't know about the other two but ben me is a, the first name that comes to mind as we get a fifth to wrap it up it's a brilliant moment and we're through to the quarter final so we will have one more game this morning thank you to those that have come in and supported as always it does make a big difference please do chuck a thumbs up on it although as ben me played for ipswich i think hasn't he so if it's someone who's never played for them, that might be a difficulty. I just don't know. I don't think it can be him. I'm really struggling with this one, Dylan. You said it's the easiest. I'm finding this harder than the second one. Has anyone else got any ideas? Because I'm really struggling with this one. It's the more modern ones that get me often. I'm wondering if it's the John Stones Everton link maybe. Because they had a few youngsters around that time again, didn't they? But then who would have recovered from that? Have Burnley got any old Everton players? 
Have they had any that are well known for that stint? Have they got someone who's played in every league of the football league? Clue four. All right, so it's a bit older than I think. Went on loan to Boston in 2005. Wow. That's going to be difficult. Uh, Josh, welcome along. Thank you for popping in as always. Next week, I'm going to start a new career, but unsure who to be. Have you got any recommendations? It depends what sort of save you're looking for, really. If you want to start from the bottom in England, I'd recommend Chorley because they've got some really good players. That could be a fun rise through the leagues. Um, in terms of the National League or moving up towards the Football League, I guess you could try and revive like a Notts County or someone like that. Um, and then thinking a bit higher, Sheffield Wednesday on the minus points. They seem to go down in most of my saves. But yes, yeah, they're the options in England. I always recommend having a go in Northern Ireland because there's some crackers out there. And then in Europe, maybe Schalke. They finish bottom in the league in real life if you want a shorter term one. They finish bottom of the Bundesliga somehow. So they'd be the ones off the top of my head, I guess. If you want a brand new one and something completely different, you could go and do the... Be Bex boy uh, into Miami if you want a brand new club and you don't want promotion and relegation. If you want the super club feel, shall we say. But yeah, they're the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Right, back to Dylan's. Who am I? Played with John Stones, Jonathan Walters, Callum Robinson, Bruno Andrade and Josh Brownhill. Played in every league in the Football League. Never played for Stoke or Ipswich and went on loan to Boston in 2005. That's making it hard for me. Because Boston would have still been Football League then, wouldn't they? They would have been League 2. So that's where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm determined to work it out though, because they will have had some decent players back then. Being a Football League club, who could it be? I can't really remember many players from that team. They had Nathan Abbey, who was the old Luton keeper, but he wouldn't have been appropriate for all of that. Hmm. I'm finding this one quite difficult. Josh, no problem at all. I hope... Obviously, pick the one that you think you're going to enjoy the most. If it's one that's not mine, then go for it. But hopefully they're suggestions that are at least a bit helpful. So I've got one name in mind, Dylan, but I'm just trying to work out if they've played with some of these players before I make a uh, fool of myself. Because I'm thinking of a player who played for Bristol City after Boston. But I can't work out if there would have ever been a link with John Stones. I don't think there would. Because I'm thinking of David Noble. but Because I'm sure he played Premier League, didn't he? But David Noble can't have played with John Stones, I'm sure. Uh, Josh, what's the longest time you've stayed with one club? So the longest off camera is 27 years where I did the San Marino challenge with the club and country. Um, and the longest on camera was probably the 20 seasons with Torquay United and FM19. But if you're doing something like a San Marino challenge or a build a nation or whatever, you're going to be decades. So... Normally, those ones, they're the ones that have lasted until the new game comes out. And that's just the longest I could do with work and other things. So, probably those two. What about yourselves? What are your longest stints at individual clubs? Dylan, clue five. I've changed my nationality and never scored an international goal. Oh, you're making it harder now. I just don't know. I cannot work out for the life of me who it would have been. The only other player I could think of from that team was Jermaine Easter, but I don't think he ever played with a lot of them. Definitely wouldn't have played with uh, John Stones, for sure. I can't think of anyone else in that side that would have been anywhere near useful. Fair play, Dylan. You've stumped us three times today. It's excellent work. So we will stick around for the quarter final of the cup, which is this weekend away at Inverness. And if after all that work at Hamilton, imagine we give it away against lower league opposition. I am still determined to get this though, Dylan. So leave me a moment. I will work it out. I'm just trying to think who they would have had back then. Because there could be some good answers in there. But 
it's, it's the John Stones bit that's getting me. Because of his three clubs, it really narrows it down, doesn't it? Makes it very hard to work out. But that's the part of the quiz, so fair play to you and well done for managing it. Let's get ahead to this game. Shanklin's not happy. You're finally getting a run in the team. You're doing well, and now you're doing this. I'll let you leave at the end of the season. Oh, why are all the strikers so much of a pain in the backside? John, this is the easiest one, is it? I thought it would have been because one of the players that are in there. Oh, why am I making this difficult? Oh, John, put me out of my misery then. Go for it. If you know the answer, put me completely out of it. Because I cannot work it out for the life of me. I really haven't got it. I don't know what's happened to me. It's the Boston loan spell I think that's thrown me, is it? I'm trying to avoid looking at the chat until I've worked it out. But I don't think I can do it. I'm going to have to succumb to defeat in the easiest one, I'm afraid. John, let me know. Let me know. I'll accept defeat on this one. I've got the two hard ones. I've earned my money today. <laughs> I've earned me 20p in ad revenue for getting Dean Marnie. Even though it did take 20 minutes. We'll gloss over that. Oh, John, you have no idea. I was going to say, oh, so you're agreeing with me. Sorry, I missed the sarcasm. I'm not sure this is easier than the second one. Clue six, I played at Wembley in 2019. That better not be at a game I was at, because I went to non-league finals day in 2019. Was it late in Orient then, perhaps? Or was it an EFL final? Oh, Dylan, you're killing us here. Uh, Josh, how far did you take Torquay, and did you win any silverware? So Torquay, we did. Torquay, we got right to the top. Um, we had two wonder kids come through the youth intake around 12 or 13 years in and did really well. Um, we definitely won a Premier League title. I can't remember if we won a Champions League, but we definitely won a Premier League. We won the league in FA Cup. And I'm pretty sure we won the Europa League as well. So yeah, we won loads there. Dorking, we never got to the top. We got to the top four. We won some domestic cups in FM20, but we never won the Premier League. And we never got to the Champions League either. Um, and then this year, obviously, Bangor City something a bit different. But I will, I will be going back to England next year. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Right, Ziga's happy to stay. That's a positive at last. Does that mean he'll sign a new contract? Please, where we can take out the minimum fee release. I don't mind paying him more. Let's see what we do. Oh, I've just said I'll win the Scottish Prem next season. Oh, we'll come back to that a bit later on. Jason Kerr's unhappy. Oh, they're all so moany. I don't really understand what's going on. Got a good thing going here, and they're just causing chaos behind the scenes. Dylan, do you want a clue that will give you the answer? You're going to have to, I'm afraid, because I'm completely lost at this point. I'm afraid I've had a bad day at the office for that one. I've, I've put too much into the D Marnie, and it's all gone wrong since. I still think it's better than the second one, though, regardless of what it is. I'm just trying to think of the timing. With John Stones at Everton, or with Barnsley. And I really don't know. Is it the Bruno Andrade one that's supposed to make it easy? Because I've sort of neglected him, haven't I? And he might be the one that's made it easy for me. So what QPR team would he have been involved in? I'm trying to work out era-wise. Was he there, about 2012? When they were Premier League, or was it a little bit later for him? I'm trying to think what year he joined the club. Because it was around the, presumably around the Bria Tory time, wasn't it? I'm really, really frustrated at myself for that one. 
Maybe Bruno Andrade was a bit later then at, at QPR. So, let's think. Who was in that team at that time? I've got to get it. The nation change was England to Gibraltar. Who played for Gibraltar there? That will have been in those teams. So, was it... The only thing I can think is Scott Wiseman. But that won't be right. That's brilliant. Oh, Dylan. Andrade is supposed to make it easy. Well, I'm afraid it hasn't. <laughs> I've really, really struggled. I'm just trying to think of the old English players that have gone over there. And I've not made it that much easier for myself. Because Scott Wiseman wouldn't have played with most of those, would he? In fact, it might have been him, mightn't it? Scott Wiseman played for Barnsley. He played for Preston. There's one or two that I can't work out. I'm trying to work out where he will have clashed with Jonathan Waters. That's the only question. Aside from that, I'm pretty sure... It might be him. I'm going to go for Scott Wiseman. Let me know if I'm right. Even so, it's taken a shocking amount of time to get it. But, if that's wrong, I'm going to need the answer. Because I will frustrate myself into the oblivion. Final game of the morning for sure then. This time it is the quarter final of the Scottish Cup against lower league Inverness. We can't blow it here. We've got to get the win. Dylan's provided the entertainment this morning. Uh, I won a lead, promotion with the club to lead two in 2019. Oh, does that mean I'm wrong? But Scott Wiseman was at Salford. That's got to be right, hasn't it? I'm sure it is. I'm sticking with it. Dylan can let me know if it's right or wrong. It's the only one I can think of because Andrade was at Salford as well and that would have been where he's playing with him. All that nonsense trying to work out QPR and it will have been his current club. <laughs> Scott Wiseman is the answer. Blimey. I would say, Dylan, that was harder than the middle one. Personal opinion, though. We've been linked with a few players who aren't huge improvements, really. But as we get to the Inverness game, it is a chance for us to reach a cup semi-final. We'll keep an eye on what's happening with Rangers in their tie. I'm not sure who they drew, to be honest. They are facing Aberdeen away. So it could be a banana skin for them. We'll find out tomorrow. But let's go and get through our game first. So in terms of performance, we're going to have to go back to Mitchell because Shanklin's been causing chaos. Do I then stick with a team that won the last one? I think we probably have to, don't we? Is anyone else back to fitness? I don't think so. So we'll stick with that. Same 11, same 18. Cups quarterfinal, a place in the semis up for grabs. Celtic out, Rangers with a tough tie. Let's see if we can finish in style. Thank you to everyone who's come along this morning. It's been lovely to have you here as always. As the Scottish Cup reaches the last eight, it is Championship v Premiership. And we really have to win this one. Our season's on the line. John, well done, Daniel. We are, I don't think I deserve a well done for the last one. Dylan's flying. I, I hope you haven't used all the good ones up ahead of tomorrow with Balamina. Because that's a transfer special. That'll be a big one. Need some big ones there. Andrade was supposed to make it easy. No, it's the opposite. Because I then went, it's got to be QPR. Because that was his biggest club. Rather than thinking about his current club. Or his most recent ones. That's where the problem came. I was convincing myself for ages it was going to be someone who'd been at QPR. As the ball goes through, Inverness are in here. Oh, my word. Ziga has had a shocker. What a time to produce it. <laughs> I can't believe it. Damn it, Ziga. What a time, sunshine. 
if we go out at this stage, it just sums up the season. The euphoria last year of finally breaking the old firm. And then this year, it's right back to square one because they can improve. We can spend 30, 40 million and just try and go to the next level. We can't do it. But we've got to come back here. We've got to show the attacking threat. As Mengi plays out from the back to Kieran Lord. Switches right to Sterling. Chance to surge down the line. He's got an overlap from Brooking, but he takes too long and gives it away. They're dallying in possession here. Nicholson with a ball forward. Mengi clears it long. Serrano's going to get there to O'Reilly. Man over on the left. Instead, find Sterling. The centre forward's up with him. Goes right to Brooking. Into Serrano. Heads just against the crossbar. Sterling can recycle it again. The cross is deflected. It finds Brooking. Into the box. O'Reilly can't win it. And Inverness are clinging on. One shot to eight. And they've scored with their only one. It's frustrating. Dylan, don't worry. You'll have some belters. I look forward to it tomorrow morning. Going to be an absolute cracker. And we'll then have a double header over here as well. A brand new series followed by a normal 3.30 video. And of course the trailer on the Food Channel is doing some bits now as well. So really good at the moment. Having a wonderful time. Thank you to everyone who's making it so good. We're chasing 2,500 over here and we're getting there quite quickly. So it really is a fantastic achievement given where we were last November. So thank you all for the support. As the ball's in a Sterling, he scores at the second time of asking. I'm not quite sure how he missed the first one, to be honest. But second time lucky, we're back on terms. And now we've got to push. Now we've got to make it count. Five minutes to go to the break. And we're on the front foot again. It's Ramos who throws in. Is that a penalty? Oh, I think he's given it. Scott Mitchell is the best penalty taker. He's been in woeful form. Maybe it's what he needs. Scott Mitchell steps up, right-footed. Into the bottom corner. That's what we need. Fantastic turnaround. Brilliant time to score. Inverness 1, Dundee United 2. We're back on track at last. Now let's go and see if we can make it through the second half and get into the semi-finals. We'll keep an eye on what the other two scores are as well. The Rangers game's tomorrow, so we're not going to know that one yet. Let's switch the Inverness tactic to latest scores. Although... Inverness have got a threatening free kick here. Maybe we're getting a bit arrogant. Mackay puts it in. Summers heads against the bar. And it falls, thankfully, into the arms of Ziga. How he's got a seven for this game, I don't know. Because that goal he let in was awful. As Mitchell flicks on the quick distribution, there's nobody there with him. Latest scores are Dunfermline leader air. Ross County lead Queen's Park. And we're 2-1 up at Inverness. Dominated again, but not shown a huge amount for it. We'll get to 20 to go and then we'll make some changes. But we're now going to rest everyone in the league and make sure this is the competition we go for. As Lord puts the ball up to Serrano. In he goes. Wonderful finish. That should be tie over. It's 3-1 to Dundee United. And we finally look like a side that's going to get to the last four. Let's go and make the changes. Lord will be replaced by McCrory. Serrano will be replaced by Mikey Johnston. He'll be an inverted winger on support. And then Brooking will be replaced by Sterling at right back. And in midfield, not really got options. In fact, we'll go Johnston right wing, Mockery left wing, and we'll bring on Stevie Mallon. That seems a bit easier. Mockery can be an inverted winger. Johnston could be a normal one. We'll just try and make it a comfortable evening at the office. It's 3-1 so far, and we'd like to add more to it if possible. As we've got a throw on the left-hand side again. Flicked on by O'Reilly. Hoof downfield. And Inverness try and get on the end of it. Jasimovic intercepts to McCrory though. Johnston to Mallon. To McCrory again. Can we get a fourth? Let's put some gloss on this result now. It's been an okay display in the end after that early shock. But we're not able to add to the score sheet. It remains 3-1. Thank you again to everyone who spent the morning with us. This will be the last game of the stream. But don't worry, we will be live with Balamini United on Twitch at 10.30 tomorrow. I'm sure Dylan will be back with some more cracking Who Am I's. He's always the star of the show with those. And Touchwood will have plenty more to look forward to in our video today too. As O'Reilly puts in for four. And that puts it beyond any doubt whatsoever. 4-1 Dundee United. Cup semi-final, here we come. And all we've got to do now to finish the morning is find out if Rangers get through. And who we've got in the semi-final. Because it could be lower league opposition again. Air v Dunfermline's been a cracker. Ross County beating Queen's Park comfortably. And if Aberdeen beat Rangers, you could argue a favourites. 
a good result for us. We're just going to tell the lads we're pleased. And let's go and get through it, shall we? Who's going to get through? Rangers or Aberdeen? Are we going to be favourites? Or are we going to be underdogs as we get towards the end of this tie? That's the big question. Let's go and find out. We'll run through the press interview. There's not too much to worry about there. It's all about whether Rangers go out now. Because that could save this season and this save. I don't know who we want for the draw. I'm not going to go and say, oh, I want to draw this side. Because that's the sort of thing that backfires normally. Into Sunday. Let's see who it is. I don't know when the draw is for the semi-final. If it's straight after the game. Still only 9 o'clock. I'm not going to worry about that reserves match just yet. We'll need a few of the backups from Motherwell though. So they can't all be playing there. Brian Rice interested in the Hamilton job. So it's Aberdeen v Rangers. The draw is the same day. So who's got through? Please let it be Aberdeen. Has the game been played yet? It's a latest score. Rangers are 1-0 up. Based on a 3 o'clock kickoff, there can't be long to go. So if we if they get through, can we avoid them? Ross County. So we've drawn Dunfermline at home in the semi-final or at Hamden, wherever it is. And Aberdeen or Rangers will play Ross County. So let's hope it's Aberdeen. It's not. They get a red card. Rangers nick it 1-0. And we get no money. Absolutely lovely that. So let's have a look at when that semi-final is scheduled. It's not scheduled till mid-April after the end of the rest of these fixtures. So what we're going to do then is we're going to play the rest of these league games off camera because they're basically irrelevant now. We'll get through to Dunfermline and then we'll start playing the league split. And then if it is going to be the final episode of the series, so we'll do all of that on Tuesday night. And then next Saturday, if we get to the final, that will just be a standalone showpiece event. And rather than doing it as a live stream, we might do it as like a premiere or something like that. Where you can just come along and watch it with me. So we'll see what happens with that one. We've got a lot to do first. And we could fall at many hurdles in between. If you did enjoy the morning and you haven't already though. Please chuck a thumbs up on it. Subscribe if for any reason you're not. And follow us on Twitch as we'll be live there tomorrow at 10.30. Thank you so much for your support as always. To Dylan for the brilliant Who Am I's.